In the name of the Father and the Son and Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. In the book of Isaiah, there is a prophecy about the coming of the Messiah and the incarnation of the Son of God. And the verse says, Unto us a son is given. A son is usually, or any son, is born to his family. But this one is different. This one is given to us. And this is a gift that's beyond any other gift. Something when we reflect on that God gave himself to us humans. So today we are going to talk in a few words about God's gift and how it is rewarded from us who receive this gift. First, what are the graces of the mystery of incarnation? What some of these blessings that we received because of this son who came to us and became one of us? We say in the, in the uh, uh, doxology or the psalm that he took what is ours and gave us what is his. He took our body in order for us to be able to receive his. We come and we gather around the table of the Eucharist, partake of him. This only happened because of the mystery of incarnation. The son that was given to us make us to belong to God and we belong to his family. We became children of God because he, the son of God, became a son of man. He allowed us in his humility to be able to serve him who gave everything to us, allowed himself in his meekness to receive our help and our support and our care. Through the mystery of incarnation, we will be able to understand his will. He spoke to us and he gave us himself to understand how much he cares. If God kept on talking with us without being able to see and interact, many things will be missing about how we know him and how we understand his good will. He also carried the burden of reconciling us with the Father. After the enmity, we became children and friends. And in him and through the mystery of incarnation, every virtue was defined and portrayed. We understand what is humility because of Christ. We understand what is patience because of Christ. We understand what is sacrifice and love because of him. All of these are portrayed very well in the person of the Son of God. So this is the gift. But how we received him, how we as humans, we receive Christ. Usually in this season of Christmas, we trade and we interchange gifts between one another. And usually we are appreciative of the gifts. Whenever somebody hands something to us, we appreciate this. But when it comes to Christ, the reception was different. People received him in different way still till today. The first group of people are those people who perceived him as a threat, like Herod. Herod did not favor that this man or this boy is going to be the king. He is going to force a change, and he was not happy with this. In the same way also today, him being a gift or is given to us, we understand if we accept him, we have to change. And this is not something that everybody welcomes. People sometimes try to keep him away at the door, not to come in my house. If he come in my house, many things have to change. Many things have to be deleted. It's not proper for us to receive him while we keep things that's against his holiness. So this is one group of people who do not like the gift simply because this is a threat and they want to keep their convenience with the lifestyle they are leading. Another group of people who are indifferent to the gift. And indifference is the worst reward for love. There is one saying by a Jewish writer. He says, what is against love is not hatred. It is indifference. It's lacking the understanding, the appreciation. We don't care. Unfortunately, this is the status in the world today. People no more care about, about God and about Christ. Even keeping him in the occasion of the Christmas became something from the past. You find maybe religious people or people who are old who are still say to each other Merry Christmas in this time of the, of the year. Being indifferent to the gift or whatever it is. 
Another group of people, those who perceive God as an interruption, the liturgy is an interruption, the time of prayer is an interruption, I have plans, I have things I am busy doing. You remember the parable of the Great Supper in Luke 14. Those who were invited, they answered him in, on, in, by excuses. They all with one accord they began to make excuses. He was an interruption to them. Sadly, also, this is common today. God becomes an interruption. I have life that I want to lead, and then I am requested at a certain time that I stop this kind of things that I am so much interested in, in order for me maybe to stand and pray, open the Bible and read, come to the church and attend the liturgy. Definitely, this is not how we should receive the gift. Another group of people, those who cared only about his gifts, not himself, what he can give. In many occasions, we think of God only as a provider, what he can give to me, what is in it for me. So the whole relationship is about this kind of benefiting from him on material things. I run to him whenever I have an exam or an interview or I have an issue or a problem or a challenge, but under like uh, normal circumstances, he has no presence and I have no interest. Another group of people also received the gift by thinking of him as a burden. Oh, we have this burden. And unfortunately, some of those are, who are called servants. God spoke to his priest in the Old Testament and said, You also say, Oh, what a weariness. And you sneer at it, at God's service. Are we among those people who receive God as a burden? We think of him and the responsibilities that he grant to us in order to be able to help one another as a burden. This is something, again, that many people receive the gift as a burden and is sneered at it. So who are those who appreciated him? Those who responded well to the gift. The first group of people are those who knew that they were in darkness. And that's why they understood that him being the light, they accepted and rewarded the gift by offering repentance. This is the ultimate reward of the gift. This is what he is after. This is the change that he's expecting us to, to receive and do in our lives. Those also who appreciated the gift are those who valued him, not his riches, riches as the true gift. It is him, it is Christ the person, it is not what he can give. He did not promise us that if you follow me, if you come to me, everything will go with you as you wish. But he promised us more than this. You will have him and his presence and his peace and him being the true reason of joy. Those who appreciated the gift also are those who carried him and his message and his example to the world, like the disciples. They went preaching, speaking, um, on his behalf, they were his ambassadors, those who truly understood the value of the gift and they were appreciative of it. And again, those people who found in him and with him the ultimate meaning and purpose of life. We are called, all of us today, if we value the gift, if we receive it and we want to reward it right, to be among those people, those people who, were, who repented, who valued him, who carried him and his message, and who found in him and with him the ultimate meaning of, and purpose of life. May the Lord to grant us all to receive the gift and to reward it with our lives and our love. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.